What is up guys, this is Migo Tech, Michael Goffrin, um, software engineer from Instagram, here to talk to you a little bit about um, programming. So I know with the whole coronavirus going down, there's a lot of people that are losing their jobs. Um, so I just want to make a plug-in for people that are interested in making in becoming software engineers. Right now, software engineers are still working, and we have a lot of flexibility in being able to work at home. So I want to give you my five tips and recommendations if you want to become a software engineer as to what things you have to do. So number one, you have to program. Programming is essential for becoming a software engineer because it's what we pretty much build our whole career on. Now programming isn't quite like history or some other type of subject where you read a lot about it and then you become good at it. Programming you have to actually do it. So that involves working on code, trying to build projects, um, actually programming. Because you can't learn how to program just by reading books solely and by um, learning all the synt about a syntax of a language. So that I see is common mistakes that beginners make, is that they want to learn everything about a language, they want to learn everything they can through documentation. You just have to do it and learn as you go. Number two, you have to build projects. So a lot of people don't realize this, but programming is not just those little courses that you happen to deal with, but it's actually building um, solutions for business problems. So to be able to do that, you have to build larger scale projects that can solve those business solutions. It's very practical, but it requires you to have a lot larger um, of a focus in terms of what you build. So, you know, an example would be like building a taxi hailing app on um, an iPhone. That was for Uber. You might have like a simpler example. I know a lot of people do a to-do app. That's a common starter project that people like to try out just because you get a little bit of experience as to how to build things. And it can be pretty complex actually. You can do a whole front end all the way to a back end and learn much of what you want through that. But if you have your other ideas for what kinds of programming problems, uh, projects you want to build, feel free to go about and do it. Um, I highly recommend trying out some more like consumer friendly apps that you might be able to feel a little bit more passionate about like web development or mobile apps um, but whatever works. Uh, number three is work with other people. It's really easy to try to program and program in a bubble but the thing is programming is never done solitarily. Most of the time when you're building like a big project you are working with other people constantly to try to improve it, um, to figure out what needs to be done to add code to it and review other people's code. So working with other people is an important skill to get and the benefits are twofold. One is you improve your communication. If you already know how to work with other people, it will be smooth sailing when you get on a job where you actually have to work with other people. Number two is um, that you learn from other people. So a lot of other people will provide you with mentorship or provide you with a the ability to see how they approach a problem. And that is really important for you to grow as an engineer. Oftentimes you get really stuck in your way of doing it, but that's not the way everyone else would approach a problem. So being able to talk with other people and learn from them is super useful for your development as a software engineer. Number four, <clears throat> you want to be able to read code. You have to practice reading code because that's actually what a lot of the job is doing. You have to understand what the code is doing before you can write code on top of it. So I'd say like most of the time that I'm working, it's not me bumping out tons and tons of code. It's actually reading the code, seeing what's already being done, and then trying to write code on top of that. So I'd say like estimate like 80% of a software engineer's time that is like coding at their laptop, like looking at things, it's really just reading code. It's not writing code. So gaining the ability to read code is super valuable. And to do that, I would recommend checking out open source projects um, and books. There are some books that give like good highlight of like how this code was done and then how it can be improved. One example is Refactoring by Martin Fowler. It goes really into depth about how a big chunk of code is and then how it can be separated out to be much simpler and much easier to understand. Um, so I highly recommend that you guys check that out. And um, number five is to practice interviewing. 
Interviewing is an important part if you want to become a software engineer because it determines whether you get the job or not. If you want to become a software engineer, you have to know how to solve algorithms and data structures. So examples of an algorithm would be like um, determine whether a string is a palindrome. So like ABA would be a palindrome. Um, data structures, that's learning about like linked lists, hash tables, arrays, what is the difference between these. Um, so if you want to learn about these things, I highly recommend checking out Lead Code which is a really good resource for being able to practice programming interview questions and cracking the coding interview, which really goes in depth from the beginning all the way to the end. Um, and these are just great resources for you to have. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, thank you guys for listening. Please leave a like and a subscribe if you really like the video, and hope to see you next time. Peace.